All right, Patrick CC, Lil Yachty was a joke. He started off his career on a dread. Lil Yachty started off his career on a dreadful note. His very first interview made hip hop fans hate him for a few reasons. The first reason was this terrible freestyle. If I was on this beat, it would be spinning vinyl. They mad because it just went viral. They mad because you can't do that. You can't do that. You can't hype me up like that because then I have to, the next bar has to be better. Like, Not a kid really selling. Uh, in high school, I never was spelling. I think, I think, I think that's why they mad at me. They mad because they. Trying to grab that. Hey. Hey, Max, stop. You can't. Oh, my fault. My, I got hype. We can't. You can't do that, right, though. All right, one more. I'm nervous. From the west side of town. Bro, where the fuck did you get that emo? Yo, these seven TV emotes are fire. Yo, look what this nigga just did in the chat. This nigga just dropped the volume. Bro, that's tough as hell. Why, why the fuck these seven TV emotes way better than my emotes, bro? Got him. I'm, I'm trying to think what to do. I don't know. I'm not a rapper. He should have pre-wrote some lyrics to avoid the embar embarrassment. Then he followed that up by admitting he's not a rapper, which people thought was just an excuse for the bad bars. But the worst part of the entire interview was at the very end. And the reason they're so mad is because they think that the young kids don't take this hip-hop thing serious. I honestly don't. <laughs> he honestly doesn't. <laughs> and he does He's called having fun. I'm sorry. You're just having fun, right? Yeah. That's it, and getting money. That's it. It's yeah. all money getting. Yeah, it's fun. just, it's just, we're just chilling. Lil Yachty straight up saying he doesn't take hip hop seriously and that it's just for money I didn't know left that. a bad taste in I the mouths of traditional rap before. fans. This was Yachty's grand introduction to mainstream hip hop. Most people thought he was just another mumble rapper, someone who will be here and gone within a couple of years. What they didn't know is that Yachty was on a path of domination. Behind his nonchalant attitude was an extremely hardworking and talented artist. Today, hip hop is in a dry, repetitive, and predictable spot, True. yet everything Yachty touches turns to gold. Today, we are going to look Look at how Yachty was hated and disregarded, mm. then every single thing he did to build back his reputation to Yo, Zaza, a thank you for the four weapon the back, bro. depends on today. It's important to consider this first interview took place on Hot 97. For decades, this radio station was an opportunity for rappers to broadcast their talents, their art to millions of New Yorkers, which was the birthplace of hip hop. So his attitude wasn't just disrespectful to Hot 97, but hip hop as a whole. Hip hop fans ravaged Yachty online. They and felt he didn't lie. deserve to be on chat. Hot 97. Uh, in 2015, 2016, the hate for like what people considered at the time mumble rap was like at an all time high. Oh my chat, this was I don't know if anyone was around for that. Yeah, niggas was there for that. If you weren't enunciating your words, niggas hated your shit. Okay, it might have popped off on the radio or some shit like that, but there was some serious hate for anybody who wasn't clearly enunciating words and focused on lyrics. Okay, I remember I was one of them niggas because <laughs> I was a huge like. Lupe fan, Kendrick fan, you know what I'm saying? Shit like that, bro. I was into that. But I didn't hate, though. I just said that's not for me. I didn't hate. I always just said that's not for me. Seven, and he was a disgrace to the culture. But it wasn't just Yachty. All melodic trap artists face resistance. Future, Migos, Young Thug, Lil Uzi Vert were just some thug. of the few that traditional hip hop fans thought were ruining the sound by simplifying it too much. Everybody trying to rap the same style with the, uh, I don't know who created it, if it was Future or Migos, but all them niggas sound the same. To make them even more mad. Telling you, everyone had that take on, yo, bro, like, oh my God. It's so crazy where we are now and how accepted and celebrated it is now because everyone felt that way in like 2012, 2013, 2014, 2015. And Yachty was added to the double XL freshman wow. list just a few months later, wow. which is another huge stamp of approval. He was added to the- Yo, all time. Like we were talking about this at the a and the other day. If they ever did a reunion, 100 million views. Double XL freshman list just a few months later, which is another huge stamp of approval from the music industry. The 2016 Double XL freshman cipher is an iconic piece oh of rap God. history that marks a distinct shift in not just the music, but the attitudes of mainstream <laughs> rappers. Lil Uzi, 21 Savage, and Kodak Black borderline mocked the legacy of Double XL as they laughed and joked through their freestyles. And although Yachty was laughing with them, he actually took his freestyle more seriously. Wasn't no fool for rice. All of these bitches, they want me, but they get one night. I give a f what you saying. This nigga know I ain't playing. It seemed like Yachty didn't want to get bullied online by rap fans again. It felt like he was trying to prove himself as a rapper. Turns out, that was exactly right. Two weeks after the freshman cypher, Yachty dropped a song called For Hot 97, along with his Summer Songs 2 mixtape. This track wasn't a diss, but Ebro at Hot 97 took it that way when he tweeted the song. Lil Yachty and his team with these high school ass bars. Followed by an Instagram <laughs> caption that read, Another Lil Rapper Caught Feelings. 
Then Yachty responded, I didn't catch feelings, it was just to show that I can rap. It wasn't a diss to you, good sir, it was simply more like a check this. Actually, caught 97. I'm not gonna try to explain myself to no one dissing me. But it didn't stop there. Yachty called Ebro on Hot 97 Live and tried to explain. I didn't catch no feelings. It was to show what's good. And nigga, you, nigga, that shit is hard, bro. I, I don't care if you 69, bro. Like, 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 Yo, f*** that, man. F*** that. These high school ass rappers, I'ma keep testing y'all. Although many people thought Ebro was being an old well, sour hater, it? it seemed like they were able to laugh and have mutual respect for Jeez, each other. Welcome back the fans welcome to me, sir, were not bro. as quick to forgive Yachty, especially because during his Pitchfork interview, he said something that would haunt him for the rest of his career. But first, I recently found out I'm being charged every month for your description he sees of all time is overrated he later doubled down and it'd be one of the greatest rap see to get started for free lil yachty said that the notorious big one of the greatest rappers of all time is overrated he later doubled down and admitted he can't name five tupac or biggie songs his brutally oh, honest wow, opinion this. about two rap legends made headlines across countless news outlets continuing the same narrative that he is a disgrace to hip-hop and should not be celebrated by the culture but he didn't need their support because at this time his song broccoli peaked at number five on the billboard Hot Country, as well as his viral 2015 hit one night slowly crept up to number 49 on billboard his debut mixtape lil bo as well as summer songs 2 were cult classics his music okay first of all i actually think that there's nothing wrong with him saying uh whoever is overrated it really don't matter like that's his opinion it could be a dog shit opinion that's that nigga opinion though i'm not gonna lie to you you don't think your favorite rapper has a bad opinion about music they just don't be saying this shit because they don't want this type of criticism but they probably feel a way they probably think one nigga that people think is nice is ass cheeks but they just won't say it ever you feel me which is cool too. You don't have to say it, but you know what I'm saying? Like, I wouldn't be surprised if Cardi thought, you know what I'm saying? One of the old school, like, whatever was ass. Like, that's just the way it is, bro. But he just ended up saying it, and that, that brings hate, bro. That's gonna bring hate, especially from his audience. Music at the time can be described as carefree bubblegum rap with a heavy reliance on auto tune, but others just called it mumble rap, thanks to Wiz Khalifa. We call it mumble rap. Oh, so y'all got a name for it? Yeah, me and my homies. I mean, it ain't no disrespect to the little homies, but like, they know what's up. They say they don't want to rap, you know what I mean? But it's it's cool for now. It's going to evolve, and I feel like those artists, if they want to be around, they'll, they'll figure out the next thing to do, but right now, that's what's popping. Although Wiz meant no harm by this term, it became weaponized by people who hated the new sound, such as Master Flex of Hot 97, a radio DJ who would often complain on his show about the new state of hip-hop. Yachty once again felt like he needed to show these guys he could rap, so he got on Ebro's Beats 1 radio show and spit some bars. Lucy Ducey, the jokes on you, I didn't grow up the boosy. All I care about is feeding my family and getting out of that camera. Funk Master Flex, please stop talking about me. Unless you're finna play my song, then don't talk about me. Again, classic <laughs> hip-hop fans were not impressed. They still relentlessly called- <laughs> Damn, yo, the internet sucks. <laughs> you can drop some shit you think is fire. Well, funny how they're trying to be lyrical now, but it's still garbage. <laughs> yo, niggas is haters on the internet. And I bet this is Facebook too, but that's what, hey, that's where the real hate be at. Hey, look, if you think you see hate on Twitter, nigga, tap into Facebook, bro. That's where the real haters be at, the full-time haters. Called him trash in the comments. This man can't catch a break. They don't like the music he makes, but then when he switches it up, they still don't like it. This freestyle prompted Funk Flex to take another shot at Yachty. That's called motherfucking bars, nigga. Fucking you know nothing about that. You know why? Because you a mumble rapper, Bow Wow, a mumble rapper. Lil Yachty, you don't want nothing too. At Neither all. you niggas want nothing. J. Cole dropped a song called Everyone Dies, which seemed to take shots at Yachty. Bunch oh, of words shit. and ain't saying shit. I hate these rappers, especially the amateur eight-week rappers. Lil whatever, just another short bus rapper. Then Yachty responded. How was that a Yachty diss? Cole, bro. How was that a Yachty? That wouldn't, no, I, don't, I would never take that as a Yachty diss because everybody names start with Lil, bro. Lil Peep, Lil Wayne, Lil everything, my nigga. That could be anybody, bro. What the fuck? Except the eight-week part obviously can't be Wayne. That nigga been up for like eight years to that point. Ten years, maybe 12 years to that point. Say whatever you want to say. Jake, but still, though. You don't listen to Jake Cole, but there's so many lils. Some people even confronted huh? Yachty to his face, like Joe Budden. I want you to know whether you're in a 360 or not. I want you to appreciate the culture that changed your life. Oh, this era was crazy. college dorm room eating f***ing oodles and noodles. I want you who's well-spoken and articulates himself well. My nigga. 
Chill. <laughs> this moment was particularly interesting because Joe was the personification of all those hate comments and it was truly embarrassing to witness. Bayati just simply responding with chill made people realize that hating on a kid who's just doing his thing is annoying and corny because Yachty just could not stop succeeding. He dropped a song alongside <laughs> Kyle called I Spy, a nursery rhyme inspired bop that peaked at number four on the Billboard Hot 100, nursery then followed that up crazy. with another hit, Peekaboo, featuring Migos. His fans, who were primarily teens, loved his style. He was weird, he was fun, and he was unapologetically himself, which opened the door for three massive brand sponsorship deals with Target, becoming the lead creative yeah, designer at Nautica, and a Sprite commercial which remixed his song Cold Like Minnesota to Cold Like a Sprite Soda. And little Yachty here was paid by Sprite to write lyrics about Sprite. It was reported that Yachty made a staggering $13 million during his extremely Yo! short career. Yachty was a supervillain to classic hip-hop fans, but he truly was a sweet and kind hero to his fans. Unfortunately, his debut album would fall short of expectations. Teenage Emotions, released May 26, 2017, sold just 46,000 copies first week, peaking at number 5 on the Billboard Hot 200. When I first released my Teenage Emotions album, I thought that it was fire. Then the sales came back and I was devastated and so confused. Aww worked so hard. Honestly, the album was kind of bad. Little did he know, he already peaked musically. He would never have a more successful song than I Spy or Broccoli, and his music struggled to impress people outside of his fan base. His second album, Lil Boat 2, sold 64,000 copies, but likely was inflated due to the incredible list of features. Quavo, NBA Youngboy, Lil Baby, Lil yeah, Pump, Trippy yeah, Red, just yeah. to name a few. And again, the album was lackluster. I'm not gonna lie. During this era, I wasn't a fan of Lil Yachty though. I didn't listen to Yachty like that. There's an occasional song and shit. You can't, you couldn't avoid this song. I'm not gonna lie. Like, if you lived in America, there's no avoiding this song right here. But I wasn't really a fan of his shit. I would hear his shit from time to time. I recently, like the last three years, became a fan. I'm not gonna lie conversation surrounding Yachty's music career is that he is carried by features or only has success with other artists on his songs. His third album, Nothing to Prove, speaks volumes about his attitude. It sold 40,000 in the first week and peaked at number 12 on the Hot 200. Hip Hop DX said he is bringing nothing new and it may be time for him to go back to the drawing board in search of new ideas before returning with a follow-up project. Most people fell in love with Yachty's music on his first two mixtapes because it was fun, cheerful, and positive. By his third album, he was slowly transitioning to fit in with the gangster rap status quo of the music industry. Don't get me wrong, he had a few bangers along the way. NBA Youngboat, Boom, Get Dripped, but they were buried in bloated albums of inconsistent music. Mm. To make things even worse, his day one friends were switching up on him. The sailing team was a dynamic group of producers and artists surrounding Yachty. Cody Shane, J-Bands, Earl the Pearl, Big Brother Chubba, The Good Perry, Aaron Vercetti, and BU. None of them were even close to as successful as Yachty, but he says it's not his fault. The sailing team became like my brothers and sisters yeah i kind of felt the need to kind of take care of them right. you know but it got to the point where i was spending so much money yeah. like almost a million dollars trying to like create this company out of my own money right, right. and they didn't want it for themselves you yeah. can't, like, you can't tried to want put them in a position them. to win he never had contracts with them never wanted any percentage of their success just wanted them to be the best versions of themselves but they simply did not want it they were lazy Trying to worry about seven other people's careers was holding Yachty back, so they decided to split up. Damn. 2019 and 2020. Yeah, you can't, you can't, nigga, who? Yeah, that's the point. We don't know him. But like, you can't want it for someone else, though. They gotta want it. Feel me? I don't know if you ever chat. You've probably done it before where like you put someone in a position to succeed and they just keep fucking it up. It's like, damn, nigga, these don't, you can't just come up on these opportunities, bro. Like, come on, tee the fuck up, my nigga. Like, you're making everybody look bad right now, bro. Like tee up, bro. You have a you're in a good position right now. You make the most of this, you will be in a completely different place next year, let alone ten years from now. And niggas, if you if they don't want it for themselves, you, that's not something you can't inspire nobody to want something. They gotta want it themselves already, and you can inspire them to achieve it. That's really it, bro. Money marks a major shift in Yachty's career. That's tough, His commercial though. success a after is, this would be a million less is, impressive, a million but he did crazy. not fall off. He started to observe the shifting a landscape of hip hop. He kept a bird's eye view over the entire culture and tried to figure out how he could make an impact. What you are about to see is how Yachty may not have been doing impressive sales numbers, not selling out stadiums, not winning awards, but he kept his finger on the pulse of hip hop culture. 
culture. Mm -hmm. His creativity had a massive impact on where hip hop is today, but where he started might shock you. With the rise of artists like Cardi B, Megan Thee Stallion, and Doja Cat, it was obvious female artists were in high demand. The City Girls were a duo from Miami buzzing with anthems like Period and Twerk. Yachty decided he would discover his inner baddie one night in the studio and write a song for the City Girls after his friend Earl the Pearl made the beat, and out came their most successful record to date, Act Up. But everything that- Isn't that so crazy a nigga wrote that? And all, and I wrote the whole thing. So <laughs> you were in there, like, how did I come to you? Like you were just like, just, real just, ass bitch, give just, a fuck about a nigga. I just thought like them. I know what women like to hear. <laughs> like, yeah, you know, like, yeah. I'm, I, like I literally sent it, I was like, yo, what's just some raunchy shit? Act Up peaked at number 26 on the Billboard Hot 100 said and was a gay. huge TikTok <laughs> anthem that even young men couldn't resist dancing to. This track is still being played in the clubs today, but it doesn't stop there. Act Up was sampled by Megan Thee Stallion just a few months later in her song Hot Girl Summer. Earl also produced this beat and the song peaked at number 11 on the Hot 100, Damn. which was Megan's most successful song at this point. Female rappers were being encouraged to embrace their bossy, brazen nature and let it out on the song, which as we all know led to tracks like My Type, Savage, Big Energy, WAP, and it all started with the vision and lyrics written by Lil Yachty. He proved he could have a bigger impact on the culture, so it was time to have one last hurrah before he changed up for good. Hey. Lil Boat 3 was the official death of Yachty's previous music career. Now the pandemic slowed everyone's lives and careers down. Yachty achieved his lifelong dream of collaborating with Drake on the song Oprah's Bank Account, which brought that carefree Yachty energy his fans once loved. He did bring that energy throughout the Lil Boat 3 project, but it was honestly his harder rap songs like Split Whole Time, TD, Pardon Me, and West Side that stole the show. With just a mere 30,000 copies first week, Yachty himself and his fans needed a revival of his career, and that's just what they got. Michigan, After LB3, Michigan, boy, a new Lil Yachty emerged. The nonchalant, goofy, and emotional teenage persona he had that was, was next, behind right? him. The new Yachty was calm, collected, and moved like a boss. He stopped dyeing his hair, got rid of the beads in his braids. He still wore colorful attire, but it was now tasteful and sleek. He was focused, but still hungry. He started a nail paint brand called Crete, understanding that young Gen Z men painting their nails is normalized, and don't have a product marketed towards them. Concrete Boys became the name of his newfound imprint record label, and his first signee, Draft Day, an upcoming artist from Broward County, Florida. Yachty's Broward. song Coffin reflects a shift in his sound that would be celebrated and copied Coffin by many was artists tough. after him, Coffin then was hit really battle tough. with Kodak Black, then Cortex. Yachty found his flow. He wasn't trying hard to impress the old heads, and he wasn't the childish auto-crooning singer. He achieved the perfect middle. His beats were more unique than ever, and you could tell he had a chip on his shoulder, but also couldn't care less if you f***ed with him or not. His energy was contagious. He recorded an entire album with this is my favorite Lil, Lil Yachty project right here, bro. The whole thing is bangers. Any anytime, anytime if you ever like right before a football game where you wanna you need to kill a nigga, you need to get in, in an energy, bro. Let me help you out, man. Concrete Goonies, uh, final form. What's the best one by far? Uh, where's it at? Hybrid, okay, <clears throat> hybrid and plastic. Plastic with maximum bass, you're gonna wanna take someone's fucking head off after listening to that song with maximum bass, bro. The bunch of rappers from Detroit, Michigan, just to show love and embrace the sound that was taking over underground rap. Although some were surprised, Yachty has always showed love to new artists. Just look at his history of collaborating with buzzing talent. He was on Lil Baby's first album before he blew up. He made a hit with T Grizzly, D to the A, in 2017. He even did Gucci flip flops with Bad Baby in 2018 when nobody would champion her music. Even Drewski, the big comedian to come from the social media era. His first major collaboration was a skit with Lil Yachty in 2019. Babyface Ray, Baby Tron, Baby Smooth are just three of the many Detroit artists bringing a fresh sound to hip-hop. Their cadence is smooth yet savage, and the beats are bouncy, but they jam-pack these songs with the bars. Beats are bouncy. Yachty teamed up with them as well as other buzzing Michigan artists on his album, hey, Michigan Let's go. This album only sold 15,997 copies in the I don't give a fuck, that shit was tough. I don't give a fuck, I could've sold two, my nigga. That shit was tough. The first week, and fans were confused by Yachty's decision, but he said, I just wanted to show It was a mixtape though, it That's was a mixtape. I just wanted to show love to all of those guys and their talent, and I feel like I rap my best on those types of beats. A rapper who doesn't care about numbers, who is able to move based on creativity and art, while constantly being on the forefront of the next wave, is dangerous. 
Boat had something up his sleeve. He continued to steamroll ahead with bangers like YAE Energy and rock climbing with buzzing rapper Remble. At the same time he was rapping his ass off, he dabbled in polar opposite genres with tracks like Love Music and Breathe Deeper with Tame Impala. He felt inspired by the psychedelic rock sound and announced that he will be ditching rap for his next album. It gonna be mid as hell. All his stuff be weak. Can't wait to see it flop like his last album. <laughs> oh, that nigga's a hater. That last guy, he's a hating ass nigga, bro. He knows he is. The negativity towards his expansion did not hold him back. He stayed low key, kept his head down, and got to work. He also developed a very close relationship with the biggest rapper in the game, Drake. Drizzy posted on IG saying, More life to my fellow brother Yachty. Happy we are locked in for a lifetime. Followed by a picture of them on a jet and Yachty branding a tattoo of Drake's OVO label on his wrist. But what this relationship fuck? started with Yachty being a super fan of Drake. I, for a very long time, wanted to just do anything involving music with him. So, like, I kind of, like, been telling him for the last, like, I don't know how many years, like, bro, I'll... Can I just like, uh, can I even just be in a room? Drake has always been at the forefront of pop culture for the past 15 years. How I, he does this is by surrounding Nick, himself with young that, talent that will pioneer the next wave. Drake conveniently became Yachty's best friend when Yachty had his hands around the neck of the culture. He helped executive produce Drake's next album, Her Loss, what? alongside 21 Savage. Yachty is credited as a producer on four songs, each of which are some of the more euphoric oh, and bangers! Memorable All of them is bangers! It's on the record. He is also the one who sourced the cover art. Some people say he is the genius behind this record. And by mid-2022, Yachty was finally being oh, appreciated on, for the genius he is. Oh my god, I got goosebumps. Can you imagine this is you right here? And this is your life? What the fuck? And just before Yachty decided to release his psychedelic album, oh he my went god. viral by accident. It's important to know that there is a huge community of rap fans who actively try to hack into artists' computers and phones to leak their music. However, one hacker straight up asked Yachty for the Poland record after he heard a snippet, and this is what happened. You have this song called Poland, bro. Please, bro, send it to me. And at the time, I'm like, bro, no one gives a fuck about my leaks, right? Like, well, I'll send it to him. Like, nothing's gonna happen. So I send it to him. Well, Yachty was wrong. Once TikTok users heard his wiggly, wobbly vocal That's vibrato, how it released? the what memes the? started pouring in. I didn't know, I didn't know that's how it spell, released. So anything different was bound to get some attention. A lot of people treated the song as a joke. Others genuinely loved it. Yachty was kind of upset when it went viral because he didn't I really like catchy. the song and he wanted to debut the wobbly vocal style on his psych rock album. But the fact that his throwaway songs he never wanted to release were going viral let him know that he was on top. And with that buzz, he finally released the psychedelic alternative rock album called Let's Start Here, which could easily be one of the best albums of 2023. Fast. Like his other albums, he only sold 36,000 copies the first week, but there was nothing but praise for his efforts on this album. The instrumentation was beautiful, bright, funky, and soulful, but also broke- A seven from Anthony Fantano was like a 12 from a regular nigga though, so. <laughs> seven is actually high praise coming from that nigga. I don't know. Does that nigga give eights or nah? Periods of eerie trepidation. His use of heavy autotune and big room reverb felt like you were ascending towards the heavens on a trip. This will probably go down as one of the best genre transitions for a rapper in history. <laughs> and the craziest part about it, he went right back into rapping after dropping this album and dropped banger after banger after banger. Fast Strike, again. slide, solo step and creep boy. Yes, yeah, sir, on the AMP cypher, my nigga. Oh, that's so crazy that that's what happened, bro. That's actually like, that's so crazy. After banger after banger. Strike, slide, solo step and creep boy, Tesla. Go on TikTok That's and you will four quickly straight see someone bangers, sharing one of these songs. Yachty has never been this consistent in his entire career, and he knows just how much the rap game needs him, which he expressed on his track with J. Cole. Allegedly, they figured out that I'm the secret recipe. The standards have collapsed. They wrote me in with lames. They treat me like I'm them, the hate I overcame. Refuse to pat my back, refuse to shake my hand, refuse to give me props when I'm not around, refuse to act like I ain't shift the sound. Like I ain't pushed the culture. These bars encapsulate everything I said in this video. They hated Yachty. They thought he was just another mumble rapper that would fall off. They didn't give him any respect and instead of tucking his tail, he worked his ass off. Now with hip hop being incredibly dry and boring, Yachty is one of the only ones bringing something fresh. Hip hop now needs Lil Yachty. Damn! W video, Patrick! W video, we like it!
Is that a, oh, it's 800,000 in three days? Hey, Patrick, W fucking video, bro. Yeah, but it's not glaze. You can't even say positive anything without people saying glaze, glaze, glaze. It's not glaze, bro. 